So I am from CERN and uh, uh, Institute of Nuclear Physics, Moscow State University. Uh, my presentation is about uh, modernization of the CMS detector uh, for the forward calorimetry. Right now we have uh, subdetectors in the CMS that is based on the technologies made in 80s. And uh, because the Large Hadron Collider started to work in 2009, uh, we uh, have run a lot of time and uh, in next four or five years some detectors, especially at low angles with respect to the beam, uh, will degrade. And uh, we decided to replace, for example, the hadronic forward calorimeter that is made from brass and uh, plastic scintillator with new detector uh, where the sensitive elements are silicon uh, sensors and uh, as absorber we will use stainless steel and uh, stainless steel uh, in real life uh, called uh, non-magnetic but this is not true it depends from the relative permeability that uh, this material has so uh, the study uh, investigates the influence of the different uh, uh, contribution of the stainless steel absorber to the inner tracker volume that is most important to measure the momentum of the charged particles. I will speak about the description of the CMS detector, the layout of the CMS magnetic system model that is used to investigate the influence of the absorber plates, uh, about layout of the model high ground variety calorimeter stainless steel absorber plates uh, also uh, about the limit on the relative permeability of stainless steel I also um, explain which method we will use to estimate the influence of the absorber to the inner tracker volume this method called the magnetic field double integrals and uh, also, I will uh, show you the behavior of total magnetic flux density and the angle between the magnetic flux density vector and track direction uh, versus track lengths and uh, different range of self rapidity. In the end, I will compare the double field integrals along the charged particle tracks uh, in the pseudo rapidity range for both cases the old calorimeter and the new one that can influence on the inner tracker volume and uh, the last will be the conclusions so what is the goal of this study uh, after finishing the Round three that will start soon uh, on the Large Hadron Collider, the CMS Hadronic and Cup Calorimeter uh, that is located inside the CMS Superconducting Solenoid will be replaced by new high granularity calorimeter that called HGCal. Uh, and this calorimeter comprises uh, the silicon sensors and stainless steel absorber plates. Uh, the relative permeability of the stainless steel is assumed to be below 1.05 and this value is limited by the mechanical uh, properties uh, really by the magnetic forces they, uh, that attracts the absorber plates into the center of the magnet 
and uh, these uh, forces uh, are limited by mechanical properties. Uh, the study investigates the influence of material onto the inner magnetic field, where we have the most important detectors like pixel and tracker. Here you can see the longitudinal cross-section of the CMS detector. Uh, this is a coil. The coil has a length of 12.5 meters and the inner diameter 6 meters. Inside the coil we have all the major de sub-detectors. Pixel, tracker, electromagnetic calorimeter and hadronic calorimeter. Outside of the coil we have magnetic system that consists of muon chambers and uh, steel yoke plate and discs between the chambers. Uh, the uh, angle of 5.7 degrees is covered by the hadronic forward calorimeter and uh, after that, we have only the radiation protected shield. So, the hadronic calorimeter consists of two parts. One we call barrel part, and another one we call uh, end cap part of the hadronic calorimeter. Here, you have only one quarter of the detector, so you can reflect in uh, four sides. Uh, this forward end cap calorimeter consists of brass plates and, uh, and plastic scintillators between them. And this plastic scintillator uh, degrade with the radi radiation damages and uh, the yield of light from these plates uh, uh, diminish. So this part should be replaced by a new one and uh, this is the goal of the study uh, that was performed with the CMS magnetic system model. This model includes the coil, uh, all the current leads and uh, the steel yoke around together with feeds and uh, uh, 40 mm thick floor on the experimental cavern. But the influence of the forward part and the uh, uh, floor is very, very low to the central field, just 0.03%. Uh, the influence of the yoke to the central field that is 3.8 Tesla is just about 7.97%. So together this is 88%. The coil uses a total current of 39.6 mega ampere turns and the stored energy in the coil is 2.28 gigajoules. So this is pretty large magnetic system. Uh, first the forces on the absorber plates were calculated. Uh, they are linear for both positive and negative part of the end cap calorimeter and the mechanical limit is one mega newton that corresponds to the relative permeability of stainless steel 1.05. So the stainless steel could be below this value, but not uh, exceed 1.05. And uh, the comparison were done for this value, 1.05. And here you can see the model of the absorber plates. So these plates are in the uh, field magnetic flux density of 3.8 Tesla 
and uh, this rectangular uh, plot reproduces the inner tracker magnetic field in the RZ plane. So the magnetic field in this cross section uh, reduced from 3.83 to 3.68 Tesla and this reduction is 3.9 percent. You can see the different colors here. Uh, absorber plates are also magnetized in this uh, large field 3.8 Tesla and the field on the absorbers uh, reduced from 3.75 Tesla to 3.17 Tesla and this reduction is about 15.5 percent. This is just a longitudinal cross-section projection of the uh, absorber plates and the inner tracker volume uh, and uh, when we compare the central magnetic flux density in the configuration with AGCAL with the present configuration we found that uh, the central field increases by 0 0.25 percent so this is not so much we had now 3.81 tesla and we will get 3.83 tesla this is nice to investigate the influence of these absorber plates to the inner tracker volume more carefully we use so-called double magnetic field integrals uh, when the particle created in the cross crossing of the beam uh, in the accelerator crossing of the beams in the accelerator the mm, turning angle could be expressed like this uh, and it depends from transverse momentum of the particle magnetic flux density uh, the step in direction of the particle and uh, the sinus uh, of the polar angle because uh, here we have transverse momentum instead of the total momentum and uh, the deflection from the RZ plane with this angle for the small step DL uh, depend from the um, vector product this element of the step uh, by magnetic flux density and uh, for the track lengths uh, inside the tracking volume uh, equal to L the angle uh, that correspond the bending of the track uh, could be expressed like integral of this expression by the length of the track and uh, the inner volume uh, is 5.6 meters in length and uh, 2.27 meters in diameter so the tracks are from 1.135 meters to about 3 meters uh, in the corner and then the length reduced to about 2.8 meters uh, to get the deflection from the RZ plane for the energetic track, we have to integrate this expression by the radial coordinate that is uh, DL times sinus that theta that where theta is uh, the polar angle, and uh, we will get in the end the expression for the deflection of the track and this deflection uh, can characterize the 
Momentum resolution. Uh, we can compare two double integrals like this for the case of the present CMS inner volume and uh, for the case uh, of the new colorimeter inserted and uh, the ratio of these integrals R uh, is the relative value of this length these deflections for real uh, versus ideal solenoid. Ideal solenoid means the solenoid with constant field uh, 3.8 tesla for example and if we consider the expression like this 1 minus r this is proportional to the momentum resolution delta p over p so uh, when we get this uh, ratio we can characterize the momentum resolution uh, we study the double integrals for different pseudo rapidities pseudo rapidity is just the variable that uh, connected with the polar angle by expression like this uh, for the value of several the rapidity 1.63489 we have the corner of the tracking volume here on this plot uh, we can see how the magnetic flux density total magnetic flux density behave in the case of uh, high granularity calorimeter inserted uh, for different pseudo rapidities so this is just uh, uh, direction orthogonal to the beam uh, then uh, the angle decreases then it reaches the corner of the uh, inner volume and then the length decreases to uh, the pseudo rapidity value equal to 3 that correspond to the polar angle of 5.7 degrees and uh, uh, we can compare the center of magnetic field uh, for both cases in present configuration we have 3.81 in the configuration with the absorber plates inserted we will get 3.82 then we can look at the angles that correspond to different pseudo rapidities. So here you have uh, the angle between the magnetic flux vector and the, the track direction uh, corresponding to different uh, values of pseudo rapidities. You see that uh, for pseudo rapidity zero we have the track that go on. Uh, at 90 degrees with respect to the beam axis uh, for 0 0.5 we have about uh, 67 degrees for 0 equal to 1 we have uh, about 30 degrees etc. and uh, what is important that this angle does not change with the length of the track so the particle is crossing all the volume and uh, the uh, direction of the magnetic flux density vector does not change much with respect to the track direction so the field in both cases is very very uniform very homogeneous. Uh, here you can see the double field integrals for both cases uh, for the present configuration uh, with constant field so for ideal solenoid this is a smooth line and uh, uh, for the 
case with EDGECOM. The present configuration and uh, uh, the new one uh, do not differ much. So the behavior of the double field integrals is the same. And you can see that uh, with respect to the constant uh, field integral, these double field integrals are very, very close. And uh, here uh, the ratio 1 minus r is plotted. So the double field integral for the present configuration is degraded with respect to the constant field integral by 1.3% at the maximum value of pseudorapidity. So this is very, very low degradation. When we insert the absorber plate, plates, uh, we increase the magnetic flux density inside the tracker volume and the degradation of the double field integral became lower, smaller. And uh, here is the ratio of the double field integral for the case of new colorimeter to the case of present configuration. And you can see that the difference is from minus 0.25% to minus 0.4%. So both cases are acceptable for the charge particle momentum measurements with high precision. And conclusions are uh, that with this value of relative permeability of the stainless steel absorbers plate uh, equal to 1.05, uh, we have the um, influence at the level of 0.25% for the central field uh, at the level of uh, 0.5% for the double field integral means the momentum resolution uh, with respect to the constant magnetic flux density uh, that is compatible and even better than the present uh, uh, degradation of the double field integral and uh, accordingly the momentum resolution at the level of 1.3%. And uh, the general conclusion is that the homogeneity of the CMS magnetic flux density in the tracking volume is perfect to provide the precise charge particle momentum measurement in both cases. Thank you. Okay, Professor. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, CMS, does it stand for compact mode? Yeah, no, no, yes. Okay. okay. Um, these stainless steel absorbers, yeah. can they be replaced by some other materials? Uh, of course, it could be brass as now, but this is more expensive. So this is just a matter of, of the cost. Is it... Is these materials, uh, stainless steel absorbers, part of cryostat to contain the superconducting magnet, or is it something else? Yes, it, this is not cryostat, but uh, it should be cooled together in some uh, volume. Okay. So we, we will have silicon sensors. This is not superconducting material. And uh, we just uh, uh, have to keep it at 10 degrees. And okay. we cool down this system with water mixed with ice. Hmm. Understand. Uh, uh, you report on the pseudo rabi ra ra rapidity. Pseudo rapidity, yes. Ita. Uh, the change is from zero to three. How do you control it? How? How do you control pseudo rabi rapidity? Uh, this just corresponds to track directions. Understand. So tracks are going in any direction. Mm -hmm. 
and the coverage of the uh, tracker is from zero to three okay. of pseudo rapidity. That means from 90 degrees angle to 5.7. Below uh, 5.7 degrees, we cannot measure the particle. So this is some sort of misalignment, something like that. Can, no, can this is not misalignment. This is just range of measurement. So we can measure the particles that go from that, that 5.7 degrees to 90 degrees in both directions. Okay, thank you very much. In 4 pi. This is almost 4 pi. So we just miss the particles that go very, very close to the beam pipe. But it was first time uh, when we study the homogeneity of the magnetic field in tracker system. So we have so so nice uh, momentum resolution for the uh, measurements that we even didn't uh, think about this. And now we prove that this is really very very nice solenoid magnet that created uh, the magnetic flux density in this restricted volume. What was the um, way of making sure that homogeneity was perfect? Was good? Uh, Mag this, this double integral shows this. Uh, this uh, deflection is very, very, very small. Mm -hmm. So when you have energetic particles that, uh, how to say it, you have the plane and the particle bent uh, in the transverse plane. So the radius of this bending is very, very large for energetic particles and the deflection from, from the plane when the track is going uh, is just few um, microns. Okay, thank you very much. Millimeters. <laughs>